You know, I checked back into the present day and found out that apparently there is an image of Godzilla and Kong on an aircraft carrier. And everyone, myself included, were like, how the hell are those two on that thing to begin with? But then I suddenly just remembered <laughs> That in 1971, we've seen Godzilla fly through the sky with no problem at all. And in this movie, he said, Fuck you physics and perform a drop kick onto his opponent. <laughs> madness. Delicious madness. guys know Ultraman? Yeah, he made a household name of himself ever since the mid to late 60s. And while I'm not an Ultraman fan like many others, I can respect the fan base that he has and have somewhat of an influence within the tokusatsu genre. But it is so unfortunate that in 1972, one studio decided to capitalize on his popularity. <clears throat> now, originally, this movie that I'm reviewing right now was supposed to ha have no Godzilla at all. Shocking, isn't it? It was supposed to be a solo vehicle for another character, one that Toho did not even create. In mid to late 1972, Tong Ho created a contest for anyone, including their mother and father, to submit a concept idea for a giant monster slash robot and build around that character. An elementary school student, obviously, was the one who submitted a drawing of a giant robot named the Red Aaron. However, upon first glance at the new suit, Based on that design, he was pretty upset that it didn't resemble his original drawing. Hey, I'd be upset too. As well, if someone else did that to me, I'd be like, What the hell have you done to my design? This is not at all what I envisioned. Ugh, idiots. Anyway, on that original design, the color was initially white. However, on the actual suit itself, it had the colors of red, blue, and yellow. What am I supposed to be expecting? That this thing, this thing literally supports the LGBT community? Or the gay community? Sheesh. And the name Red Aaron was only for publicity. But they, re yeah, but they renamed it Jajaga. Note how I said that so fluently. <laughs> Weird. So, remember that um scrap monster that was supposed to be in Godzilla vs. Gigan? Well, he got the job here, and that monster's name is... No, I'm not bringing back an old meme, Cena. Megalon. And he is the main villain of this movie. Or... Uh, I don't know if you could call him a villain. So... They got a movie planned, and they are ready to film it, but there was something off about it. Ongoing test screenings, storylines, screen appearances, and marketing value made Toho come to the conclusion that Jaga wasn't going to do well on his own. I mean, clearly, have you seen him on the poster? He looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Who in the world will want to take this giant robot seriously. Come on. Who in the world out there would be able to take that thing seriously? I didn't. So, they did the rightful thing and they shut down the project. Almost one single later, 
producer Tomoyuki Tanaka called Shinkichi Sekizawa to ask Godzilla to come back to Japan from his ho holiday vacation because apparently he gets he gets time off apparently. Uh man, he's, he better get paid for that. And as an addition, they decided to put Gigan in it for good use. <clears throat> Three titles were pitched by Sekizawa. Godzilla vs. the Megalon Brothers, Undersea Kingdom's Annihilation Strategy. Wait, where have I heard that one before? Hmm, I don't know what comes to under mind. Anyway, the second one being Insect Monster Megalon vs. Godzilla, same subtitle. And to just Godzilla vs. Megalon. Obnoxious title city. Goddamn. Speaking of which, the end result, what was released in Japan on March 17th, 1973. Keynote, this is the first time that in Godzilla history that the movie didn't break the 1 million admissions. I wonder what the hell that means. However, on May 9th, 1976, it was somehow a success, earning a <clears throat> three hundred eighty-three thousand seven hundred seventy-four dollars in the first three days. <clears throat> Vincent Canby, why does it sound like Hamby, the film critic of the New York Times, wrote a review stating, <clears throat> and I quote, "The film completes. What the hell? What the hell does this mean?" The canon canonization of Godzilla, whatever the hell that means. It's been a remarkable transformation of the character. The dragon has become St. George. It's wildly preposterous, imaginative, funny, often intentionally. It demonstrates the rewards of friendship between humans as well as monsters. And it is gentle. You know, I myself haven't watched this movie since 2013, and that was because there was a new movie on the way next year. So I was literally just binge watching the whole fucking series up to that point until the new movie came out in 2014. So <clears throat> maybe I've forgotten some things, but who knows? Well, is it still entertaining? Well, let's find out. This is my review of such movie. The plot goes as follows. Nukes galore. Well, it is a Cold War after all. Hmm. And too bad they were not testing on uh, private islands like they were supposed to. <sighs> Idiot. Why in the world do they always have to break the rules? <laughs> they broke so many rules, in fact, that it literally caused so much disturbance on Monster Island. Pissing off the monsters, including Godzilla himself. The latter of whom was on a vacation. Mm, no, scratch that. Who was starting to go on a vacation because there were so many nukes being dropped on his island. And you know what? And he said, fuck this. I'm going on vacation. You guys handle this. I'm sick of this shit. Wait, hold on a second. Don't you feed off of radiation? Jesus Christ, he figures a lot of things. Uh, anyway, one title sequence later, we got to a nice picnic. The two also not really gay people you know, watching a child have fun with a custom boat. Whatever that boat is, I, I want that for my nephew. I need to get that thing for my nephew. <laughs> okay, unexpected noise that just literally popped up in the background. <clears throat> I will continue on and suddenly earthquake suddenly an earthquake excuse me and the child is about to be pulled into a worm a whirlpool oh please die please die please die but he is saved at the last minute god damn it and suddenly sinkhole draining all of the water draining the entire lake i'm sure all of the fish will be very very happy on the way home they discuss what just happened Goro, played by, I hope I get this first name right, I'm not even going to try to, but I'm going to say his last name, 
<clears throat> Goro, played by Mr. Sasaki. There we go. Why did I, why did I pause right there? And checked on his robot to see if it was all right, which it was. Which it might have been if it wasn't for a pair of two men in silly looking monkey suits. Okay, let's be honest. Those suits, they aren't really suits. They're literally fucking monkey suits. <laughs> the other guy, Hiroshi, played by Yutaka Yahashi, he chases down the two guys who tried to rob the place. But ends up finding them dead. <clears throat> sort of. Finally, the robot named Jajaga is completed. And it works. And it becomes their slave. I mean, <clears throat> servant. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, that didn't come out wrong. Suddenly, those two guys, who was thought they were dead, get out the little kid. Ruko, played by Mr. Kawasi. I butchered the shit out of that. I apologize. They capture their home and contact Emperor Antonio of Zetopia, played by Robert Dunham. That's how his name is spelled, and that's how I'm going to say it. Who, <laughs> who, by the way, really needs a shave on those sideburns and his entire body hair. The state of it! Christ! <clears throat> who then summons a giant bug monster named Megalon to attack the at the world's surface. I'm starting to run out of giant shoes here. Then, Jajaga flies away for some stupid reason. And then Hiroshi breaks free and tries and tries to go after the other two. Meaning, the guy he was with and the kid. Who are in a container and are about to be dropped into a lake. Who then get chased by other Zetopians. So much fucking shenanigans, it's hard for me to keep up. Oh, I got a burp. Oh. Oh. You, you heard nothing. Meanwhile, in plot number one, Megalon finally reaches the surface. It took him like a hundred years to get up there. Who then chases down Jajaga for some reason. One military stock footage later, Megalon attacks a dam and almost kills the two leads. but then is saved at the last possible second or minute. Let me touch on that for a minute. That container fell down, made contact with Megalon's whatever, whatever drill hands. They go flying through the air at high altitude and just splat down on the ground. They should be dead. That fucking container went flying and it should have killed him. Killed them. But it didn't. Then Ruko wants Jet Jack out to get Godzilla to fight it. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, you have to try again later. He's on vacation. Uh, well, that's exactly what happened. Damn you, shenanigans. <sighs> Meanwhile, back in plot number one, Megalon loses his ship for some reason, but then was gained back control by the Zetopians for some reason. So, Jen Jaka convinces Godzilla to cut his vacation short to come back to Japan and save the day. Because that's apparently his job motivation. <laughs> oh yeah, what's your um, job description? Oh yeah, I take vacations to kill everyone and oh, I literally saved the world from giant bugs. <laughs> yeah, that kind of job description. What's yours? Hmm. Meanwhile, back in plot number two, they manage to get their home back, but they can't stay for long. Suddenly, Gigan! One of the lamest ways to put Gigan in a movie. Lame. <clears throat> and suddenly, I do not know how, Jet Jaga takes no more command from anybody and starts acting on his own and even going so far as to grow to 50 meters and smacks Megalon in the face. How and why? How and why? I do not understand this. 
anyway, and the fight begins. Gigan comes in and tags and tags with Megalon, turning it into a two-on-one handicap match. Godzilla finally arrives. Took him long enough. <laughs> Was he circling around Monster Island so he wouldn't be able to get there on time? <laughs> Apparently, to be late, you are. And now it is not turned into a tag team match. Towards the end, Gigan cheeses it again. What a wuss! And Godzilla performs. I'm not shitting you. A Q gravity drop kick. Not once, not thrice, but twice. And. That causes Megalon to cheese it also. Godzilla goes back on his vacation and cue Jet Jagger song to end the movie. We'll be right back after this short break for my final thoughts. And trust me, people, it ain't going to be long. These final thoughts are going to be short, sweet to the point. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here are my final thoughts in a nutshell. <clears throat> I have it written down here. Boring until the last 15 minutes. Uninteresting story, bland characters, and a lackluster villain. Thankfully, the final battle does entertain me in some way. And it does manage to get a chuckle out of me here and there. But not by much anyway. The special effects? <laughs> Lacking. There are so many points in this movie where I can literally see the wires. Jet Jaga looks like a ripoff of Ultraman. Gigan looks completely weird. He looks like he's on cocaine. Megalon, he does look good. He does look good, but kind of is a ripoff to Gigan. Godzilla's suit, while it while the face gets better in like two movies. Well, in the span of one movie anyway. The face in this movie, not all. Nah, not all that inspiring. Do not like the big eyes. Th those eyes are just yeah, creepy. <clears throat> I would even argue that they are even more creepier than than the <clears throat> that suit that was used in Son of Godzilla. And now finally, the music. Weird and repetitive. So with all of these points being said, it should come as no surprise that I grade Godzilla vs. Megalon a very generous, generous 40 fuck you gravity drop kicks out of 100. Not worth your money. So finally, next time we get into an actual classic, 
to that guy. Why didn't know what was he talking about? There was no entertainment value whatsoever. The only entertainment value I found was in the last 15 fucking minutes. Not enough. But, thankfully, in the next movie, in the next review, it does entertain. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been excited to review this one. Yes. <laughs> Until then, I have been Demetrius, signing out from the Bumerkin Productions. I'll see you on December 24th. Happy holidays, everyone. I love you,